Hey everybody! It's Wednesday. It's Hump Day. Us Two Door Cinema Club changing of the seasons as a release they did last year. Welcome. Uh, and it's live. We're live here at Public Allies National Office. You're watching hashtag PALM Live, our weekly webcast on what's happening in the alumni network as well as featuring alumni uh, from time to time. So this is our third episode. Thanks for making it. Those of you that are watching live in the room, those of you that are watching on Twitter, hashtag PALMLive. Uh, and those of you that you're watching from the future, it's great to meet you in the future. Hope we'll meet sometime soon. Uh, today, uh, we had slated on the docket to do our Community Innovators pitch session. But what's beautiful about the show is the agility. We're flexible, so we're actually gonna we're gonna move that to next week. We're gonna feature our, our community innovators challenge actual uh, folks, and I'll talk about that towards the end of the call or end of our our uh, engagement today. Uh, but what we're actually gonna do is that we're gonna mix it up a little bit. Um, we're actually gonna bring in in a in a, in a few minutes. Uh, we're gonna bring in Raul, uh, and actually we're gonna do a I'm gonna do a conversation with Raul about the state of alumni affairs or maybe questions he's got. I don't know. I don't even know what the questions are. Uh, we just we just kind of put this together because uh, to be totally transparent, we didn't we were able to book enough PL on guests, or we, we we were booking them for next week. So that's how we're we're filling the middle block. Um, and then at the end of the call today, I want to talk more about this great community innovators challenge called Unusual Suspects, brought to you by the awesome people at American Express. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna talk about that because we'd love to leverage the alumni network and support in that. Okay. Okay, so let's get started. But first, before we get started, we always got to start with shout outs uh, and the Twitter, the Twitter check in question. So, right now, I'm going to go uh, just get you heads up. Today, we posted it early in the morning so more people could play along. That's what we like to do every week, every Wednesday. Again, to remind you, if you're new to the show, we put a question on Twitter through my account and the Public Allies account. Um, and that, this sort of echoes when public allies, you know, when you're an ally, you get a chance to be with the cohort in the circle, uh, and everybody sort of weighs in on a check-in question. So this is me bringing it back for our alum across the country in this big digital circle. Uh, give everybody a chance for today. Uh, hashtag at PLM Live, the, the public allies check-in question. And so today's uh, check-in question is, uh, let's see here. I'm going to start the screen share. And today's check-in question, what's a talent or gift that you'd love to share more with your community? What's a talent or gift that you'd love to share more with your community? So if you're on Twitter right now, um, would love to ha be sure to hashtag it PALM Live so we can see it. And, and just to give you a little bit of flavor, there have been people that have been playing along, uh, which has been super cool. Um, hopefully you're seeing this right now. Uh, my Twitter feed right here. So uh, much love to guys like Jason Foster in Los Angeles talking about he, he's looking at sharing the sport of tennis. Uh, Renee Bracey Sherman, she's at Cornell University right now. She says she wants to share a culture of stories and listener create a, share stories and create a culture of listeners. How to build movements. Super jacked about that. Thanks for chiming in. Hannah Davis, she's in Baltimore right now, but she's an alum of Arizona. She's looking forward to sharing uh, compassion for youth and families and laughter. So that's that's what she's sharing. So that's that's super awesome. Uh, so uh, let's see here. Let me uh, go back to the screen share off right there. So that's that's what's happening. Um, that's what's on Twitter right now. And so if you're on, if you're on Twitter, hashtag PLM Live. We want to know what is the gift you're looking forward to sharing. Uh, you know, it's an appreciative inquiry, Tom. Um, I'm looking forward personally to sharing a gift uh, about. Um, there's this awesome organization in town called Ex Fabula in here in Milwaukee. It's founded by actual uh, help founded by one of our public allies alumni, Megan McGee. Uh, she's running it now, and they do storytelling in Milwaukee. I'm looking forward to helping actually uh, do some workshops with them and and uh, working with some new folks to become storytellers. Uh, during their, uh, they do a monthly storytelling jam. I'm looking forward to training some new storytellers. So that's that's the gift I'm looking forward to share. So that's. So that's that. I uh, want to keep playing along, and we'll check back in. If you're watching live, uh, we'll, we'll check back in and uh, see what other people are saying on Twitter. And hey, if, there, if you got some space on the Twitter feed, hashtag a fellow alum or tag a fellow alum so that they play along. Uh, and of course, Raul, uh, we will meet later.
my teammates will be uh, sending vintage public ally swag to their favorite tweets. So that's, that's a thank you for playing along uh, in the check-in game. Uh, great. So that's that. I also want to do one more shout-out, uh, if possible. Uh, there's some awesome stuff that's happening in our network. I don't, I don't know if you're hip to this, uh, but uh, we got this great, um, got this great site uh, called The Pulse. Um, and, and so on The Pulse, uh, it's publicalliesalumni.org if you're watching this right now. We've got some great stories this week. Uh, and so some of my favorite stories that we're linking to every day, we link to a different Public Allies alum. Uh, so when we find it on the interwebs, and we know you're an alum, we want to we celebrate you. So we'll find you and tag you and actually link it back to you. Um, and so one of the exciting stories, uh, you know, it's great to see people are, are doing great things. For example, Robert Wydell, North Carolina 97, just published a new book. He's a professor. Just published a new book, Birmingham and the Long Black Freedom Struggle. Thanks to Chuck McKinney in North Carolina. He's another alum. He teaches at Rhodes College. He got me hip to this on Facebook. Congrats, Robert, on that. Also want to celebrate Adrian Carver. He's leading a delegation of folks, uh, of young adults, uh, the New Mexico Youth Alliance, to uh, influence lawmakers, uh, elected law, law folks in uh, New Mexico, to, to make sure that young adults are part of the new economy, right? And how are we including them? How are we moving them onto pathways of higher education? And employment. So props to Adrian Carver who's getting that done in New Mexico. Go to the Pulse PA alumni .public .org. You can share your story. We'll feature it there. If you don't want us to come find you, uh, you share your story. But just check that out and get inspired. There's some awesome work that's being done. One thing I also want to shout out, my guy Jonathan Brostoff. I think hopefully that shows up on the feed there. He's a Public Allies Milwaukee alum. He is running for the 19th seat, 19th District Assembly. Of, uh, of Wisconsin, uh, so my man Jonathan Brostoff, he's been working, uh, he, he's been working for some other uh, elected officials recently, but he just made the jump, and and so this is an event organized by fellow alum Sid Robinson, he's the fellow uh, there rocking the sweet chain and the earring. Sid organized this event for Jonathan Brostoff. Jonathan is the the guy with the the tie, the white shirt, the blue tie. He's running for office. He's got a heck of a fight going on. But what I met with Jonathan to talk about it. And what impressed me was that he, he, he wants to do this for the right reasons. He wants to make sure that uh, you know, Wisconsin is being more inclusive, it, it's being more fair. And I, I'm just it's super excited to see somebody putting the public allies' values and trying to make that happen. Uh, so keep an eye out for Jonathan Brossoff. The election several months from now. Um, and so hopefully you'll see that buzz on Facebook. But he, he's much credit to the public allies on locally that are supporting him and supporting his candidacy. We also got another public ally, David Bowen. He's an ally alum from a couple years ago. He's actually on the board of supervisors. He's on the county supervisors board. So we got some other folks happening here in Milwaukee. It's cool to see that that leadership uh, is happening in the elected space. So those are some of the shout outs. Uh, you you make stuff happen. You let us know what's going on, and uh, we'll be happy to to share it back with you. Uh, so that's what's happening there. Oh my God, the room is getting full. The room is getting full. Love seeing it. I want to say hi. Dana's in the room. Hi, Dana. Hi, Sabine. What's up? We got some other folks in the room. Uh, Chris Al. Oh, Chris Al, welcome. Love seeing you on Twitter. Love seeing you in the room. Welcome back. I love seeing the room get big. Um, uh, and uh, maybe we'll uh, welcome aboard. Welcome to the room. And if you're not in the room, hit us on Twitter. We got folks paying attention. Uh, and uh, it's great. It's great to see the audience keep growing for this thing every week. Thanks so much for taking your time with us to, to hang out with us. Um, at this point, the middle segment, before we talk about community innovators, which we'll talk about in a bit, uh, I wanted to bring on my colleague again. We always do this halfway through the show. I love to, have, I love to show off my teammates because I work at a pretty awesome office in the National Office. I got my guy Raul, Raul Vasquez. Uh, he's here in the office. He's, in, he's not in the studio. He's in a different part of the office. But uh, Raul... Uh, we're going to do a quick segment with Raul, and Raul, can you intro what the segment we're going to do right now? Yeah, MacArthur, we're going to, can you hear me first of all? You sound beautiful. Okay, great. For, uh, you know, you're usually the interviewer, and um, in lieu of the fact that, uh, you know, we had some scheduling issues today, we are, I, I, I thought it would be a great idea to interview you and put you in a, a position that maybe you're not always used to being, because you're such a good interviewer, and I know you love doing that. So... Uh, how does that feel? Can I be clear that I didn't ask Raul to do this? All right, I just want to be clear. I didn't put him up in this. <laughs> I just said, Raul, well, we don't have any guests this week. We've got to figure something out. So he's like, hey, let's do this. And I'm like, yeah. That, you know, it was like I had a MacGyver moment, and he's like, he's doing the best he can. So 
Uh, yeah, play along. yeah. Thanks, Rob. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm jumping. I'm jumping at the chance to do this. I've all been right. wanting to do this a long time. So, MacArthur, um, first of all, tell me the quickly if you could tell me the 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 famous story of your interview <laughs> with the founding executive director of Public Ally Chicago, where you had a, a a rather rough moment, and if you could briefly just just walk us through that and 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 uh, yeah. Okay, so... Oh, yeah, by the uh, way, what, what was her name? What was her name? Yeah, well, we'll get into that. So it's 1997. <laughs> uh, I'm in Chicago. I just graduated from college, uh, and I had a very healthy self-esteem, as most college graduates, I think, had. Um, and, and so I applied to, to, to be in the apprenticeship of Public Atlas Chicago because uh, some folks told me I, I might be good for it. Um, and I thought, sure, that's as easy. I can do this. Uh, and, and so I got the interview late, and it was a summer day. It was sweating, so I'm sweating through my shirt. Um, and the interviewee was with the panelists. The panel was a, a executive director, the, a current ally, and uh, and a program person. And so the program staffer uh, was Leif Felsmo. Uh, the ally was Rob Panganaban, and the uh, executive director that was leaving was Michelle Obama. And so that was my first job interview uh, ever was to be in the public house program. And so I remember I showed up late, and I remember answering questions, and you kind of get a vibe from me. I can get pretty excited. And I remember uh, Michelle had said to me uh, five minutes in, she's like, I don't understand anything you're talking about right now. You need to slow down. What are you saying? And, and I was like, oh, OK, let me slow down. And, and she was seeing through my BS answers because I was trained to do an interview a certain way. Uh, and so we got real. I was like, all right, let's, let's do this. Let's go. And we got into it. She started asking me, like, you graduated from this private school. Are you here to fix people? Are you here to learn from people? You can do anything you want. You got this privilege to do anything you want. Why are you doing this? And I, and I pretty much told her, you know, like, hey, you don't know me from a. It, we got into it. It was like WWE. It was like back and forth. It was like full contact. You know, you know. I'm, I'm like, let's go. Let's. Do, I'm about it. I'm about it. Let's do it. And then it was like this passion. 45 minutes where there's like no other job interview I've ever had, right? Because I had to be authentic, talk about myself, talk about what I'm working on. I remember all this, and I remember at the end, I just go like. Listen, you don't know me except for a jack piece of paper, but I guarantee you by the end of Public Allies, not only will I be better, but this place will be better because I went through it. Thank you, good day. And I like, I got up and left. And, and I was like, what the hell? What was that about? That was the dumbest thing. You know, that's not how you interview people. That was rude, but I was just like fired up. And I just thought, well, hey, you know, I didn't get that job probably, but it was a cool experience that Michelle seemed cool, Leif seemed cool, uh, and uh, I got accepted. And and believe it or not, years later, I never thought I'd be here. You know, I'd like to think I'm carrying that out, uh, that promise. I have for. So that's, that, that's, a, that's an amazing story, MacArthur. Thank you for sharing that. Um, in in the years that have tra transpired since then, what do you think? How do you think you've changed as a leader, um, in the most significant way for you? Uh, I think you know, my 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 colleague David McKinney, who was also an alum and who is also uh, probably the guy I still say I want to be when I grow up. So he's, he's an amazing guy. Uh, and uh, he, has this, he has this statement. He talks about, like, at some point, you know, you feel like leadership's about you, and then there's this arc that happens where you figure out it's really not about you. It's, it's bigger than you. And I, that, for me, that's been the journey over the last 17 years since being an ally, right? Like, the, I need to know more about myself. But ultimately, all the actions I do or the, the responsibilities I take on, they're in this larger context. And, and that's, that's what, for me as a leader, I, I've, I've really had to take on and realize, you know, is just what is the context I'm in and the responsibility I'm, and I'm serving to. Um, and and uh, because I think leadership development, I've always been a leadership development junkie. I've always been in this work. And it can be really seductive to be about yourself, you know, to be about your own thing and your own deal. Um, and, and I think self-discovery and self-awareness is important, but I, I think in terms of the, the years, it's sort of realizing that the every you know like you, you, there's a for what there's got to be a for what that drives this stuff. It's got to be in context of something. And when I've been most depressed or when I've felt most lost, it's when I've lost that construct. Like, what am I about? Like, what am I? Why am I working? Like, what is the point of this? Um, and what? And for me, it's really had to be grounded in. A space of equity. It had to be grounded in a sense of justice. Like that's that's really what I've yeah. I've tried to be about. Yeah. And the thing about it, Raul, is like you can say that. You know, when I was 23, I could say that. But 
But you know, when you say that now at 39 and I have a mortgage and I got two kids, like it's it's harder to be out justice <laughs> because like I'm just trying right. to make sure my kids get to karate. You know what I mean? Like it's right. it, it, it's it's on one level I look at them and I want to make sure they're coming into a better world. But it can be really easy to put up that barrier and go like, man, I live in Shorewood and I'm good. And I think that's a challenge yeah. I put on myself. You know, like for yeah. example, when I think about opportunity youth, man, it's like that that's important to me because. We we got to make sure that those young folks get access. Well, hold that thought. Kind of, not, you go ahead. Sorry. Hold that thought because that's that, that's you're you're you're, get, you're, get, you're getting ahead of that. That was going to be about my next question. Before I get to my next question, I want to give yeah. a shout out to Joanna Hallu, who is hopefully listening to this at some point in the future in New York. I know she provides a lot of support um, in the national office in general. And um, MacArthur, can I just can I ask that we get her a camera? Because I think her 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 her, her camera is broken, so she can be. I don't so think she can do. Camera breaking. I don't think it's a technical issue. I think it's an adaptive challenge for her. She doesn't want to be on this call. I really think okay. she want to show it. And we need her. I need her on this call because I think. Yeah, she's good. Get sick, look at, look she at would be people. great. Yeah, she's yeah. awesome. That's I love her. Great. Okay, so now that, right. now that we got that, now that we got that out of the way, we got about know, four or five minutes left on this. So okay, this is this this is this is my curveball question. I know you're a big sports fan. I'm a huge um, sports fan, and I know you're really passionate about opportunity youth. As you know, AmeriCorps is very uh, passionate about opportunity youth and serving and engaging millions of young people, 16 to 24, who are out of school and out of work. Um, and in this context. In, 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 in the Super Bowl hoopla and all the interviews and all the, the noise that came out of the Super Bowl, so one, one, one thing caught my eye, and it was a um, former Denver Broncos quarterback going on, I don't know where, where he said it, but he, he basically said that he doesn't believe in safety nets, that he was, a, you know, he was a conservative, he doesn't believe in safety nets, but to me the key phrase, and this is a quote, he goes, I believe we are given an opportunity to succeed or not succeed. And I think what he was saying is I think he believes that everybody is given an opportunity to succeed or not succeed. Hence, there's no need for a safety net. If you didn't take advantage of your opportunity, well, you're, you're, you're out of luck, bud. Um, how do you see that in terms of the work that's happening nationwide to, engage, to give actually people opportunities? It's a curveball. Uh, it is a curveball. That's hard questions. Yeah, I, agree. I mean, I, th I think the thing about it, I've worked in youth development. Like, that's when I was an ally. I, I was in youth development, gang violence prevention at the Illinois Center for Violence Prevention. So I got, that's where I broke in the business, and that's been my framework for a lot of this work, was when, uh, and maybe it's still relevant today, but I remember it was like safe spaces, caring adults, um, you know, uh, Learning opportunities that are inspiring. There were there was things that you listed, right? They're like, how do we how do we make sure that this is there, right? Um, and and the reality is is that like not everybody has access to even that formula. Like even if that formula was correct, like if given all that, like that's how young people are gonna get grounded. Like we don't like even if that formula is correct, like young people only are not uniformly have access to that, right? And so right. and if anything, some people aren't even allowed to make. Now it's a freedom to fail, like have the opportunity to make mistakes. And, and when I look at sort of how the game is set up, uh, some people can make mistakes, and it's like game over. Like they, they don't even get second chances. And and I think for me, it's sort of like that's it's a shame, not just on a personal level, but it's a shame for us collectively that we miss this stuff. You know, we we, you know, I, I just can't believe that one person gets to drop out of school and then they become the head of Microsoft, right? And then one person drops out of school, and we never know what that person's about. And again. There, there's that fine line between personal agency and personal responsibility. Yeah, there, that should be part of it. But I, I think that I don't think society or collectively we're holding our end of the bargain to creating this playing field, to creating a way of the game that that these folks can access and can do that. And I, I mean, and, and that's that was ever since I was in youth development, right? That's what I saw. Right. I saw tons of talented young kids who are just dealing with way more stuff than than most adults were dealing with. Right, and yet they came came to my place to talk about violence right. prevention. Dang. Right. Right. So, you know, I, I don't, you know, I don't know how to answer that question in two minutes, except that it's 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 one of those things that I know that when I look at allies across the country and, and learn about what their work they're doing, as well as our alum, it's on our radar. I'm excited about figuring out how do you, how do you join all the different pie pieces together? Right. How do you join all these together so that it's coherent, as opposed to it's all these different. Um, things are that are all over, and and when I look at what our alumni work is about, you know, on one level, right, it's we want I want my alums 
to I want my fellow alums, my fellow alums, to, to expand their leadership practice and impact, right? I want you to get better. Mm -hmm. But the second part of that is how do we get the band back together? How do we do this collectively, right? Or, right. or people that weren't alone, you know, because like, yeah. if we're just going to limit public and alumni work to 600 people a year, then we're not going to change anything. We got to bring right. other folks in. So right, right. Well, I mean, I don't know. That's, that's cool. That's you know, thank, thank, thank you, Mike. Do I have any more time? I think I'm out of time, right? Oh, you can. Or I don't know if you want to turn it over to people in the room. If they got questions, you can type it in the group chat. Yeah, um, type it in the group you know, chat or, or Twitter it or whatever. All, all I know is that a dream has come true, and I got to interview you <laughs> after listening to you interview so many people. So that, that's <laughs> kind of cool. Well, I hope people didn't find it as, as self-indulgent as I felt like it was, because it's <laughs> super uncomfortable. Uh, but I, I appreciate, all again, your work. Um, if, if people wonder, like, you know, how, how come Public Allies is a really great status update to create photos and just great, you know, if you thought the messaging, if you, again, okay, not to get wonky, but if you all in the last year have thought, wow, Public Allies is starting to get more on our radar, it's guys like Raul who are thinking about this stuff. And so, I again, I thanks so much for Raul for being a part of this. And, uh, Thanks, Look at us. We're all thanking each other and patting ourselves on the back. Uh, so, all, right. All, right. all right. All right. Thank you. So, hey, Ro, what, you see any other Twitter tweets out there that you like? Uh, uh, you, you know what? I haven't been checking. Um, what, what's the gift you're looking forward to sharing with people? You know, I love making uh, videos, and I love making short kind of documentaries and the magic that can happen when you capture image and sound and put it in a certain order. And I'm all about, and for a long time, I've been about telling stories that are untold. And uh, I would, I, I just, you know, the only thing that prevents me from doing that more is time. Awesome. Well, I look forward to, I want to see those stories being told in 2014. Thanks for hanging out with us today. Thank you, man. Awesome. We're not done yet, people. We're not done yet. I got one more thing. We got we got several minutes left, but I want to plug this. Right now, we are in the middle of our first Community Innovators Challenge called Unusual Suspects, brought to you by American Express. Thanks, American Express, for helping us out. And this is how the game is played, everybody. Uh, we invited our alumni from around the country to submit an idea that connects the unusual suspects to help build community. Uh, in your community, in, in your areas, and it's got to be kind of a, a doable project by uh, the, the end of spring, and it's, it's only going to probably cost two thousand dollars to do. So we put some context for what type of project you want to do, and it could be in your current organization, or it could be something brand new, like you just like, hey, this would be cool to do. Okay, uh, and so we put the call out there, and we got about thirteen responses back saying, like, I want to, I want to. This is the idea. This is my idea for doing this, and this is what we're doing at Public Allies and Alumni. You know, this is what we're doing is we are um, creating a platform to do this over at Indiegogo. So I'm taking to our Indiegogo page. And over the next two weeks, we are featuring on this page all these different campaigns. Uh, and our hope is that our public allies alumni, and that, this is why this is the first layout. We're going to start telling more alumni about this. We hope that our public allies alumni come out and support their fellow alum to, to, to achieve their goals. For the next two weeks, this is a push. We got all these projects we want to we want to support. You know, we're also public allies gonna we're gonna put some money in the till. Uh, we're gonna stay tuned. You know, look, we're gonna, there gonna be special challenges within the next couple of weeks. But I want to bring it to your attention to go to this page at indiegogo.com backslash partners backslash public allies innovators. We'll put the link you know on the on the telecast later. But there's some really awesome projects that are being done by your fellow alumni in in parts across the country. And we would really love it if you can help us support help support them to reach their goal over the next two weeks to do that. And and for me, it's it's not just about getting these projects done, right? It's not that. It, it, to me, it's about showing, you know, let's show the power of our network, right? I would love this to be a muscle that we keep generating, we keep we keep practicing. Is how do we support each other, right? Because my theory is we all subscribe to the values of public allies. And so how do we keep supporting each other to keep reaching our goals, to keep making community happen? We've never really done this before. Like in the past, we've asked you, hey, can you support public allies? Can you, can you support the local side? Can you support the national office? I'm actually asking you to redirect that and support to appear. And, and what I love at the national office, what we're trying to do is raise up these great stories of people like Shafan Nichelle, Shannon Daly, Sabine's on the call. She's doing a really cool project. Um, Akram Abdullah is doing this really cool project teaching about financial literacy. Uh, you know, Travis Raymond is doing some awesome stuff. So there's some really cool stuff that are happening. 
And and so our alum said, listen, I got a dream, I got an idea, I'd love to share. And they're they're going to you, Copa Gala, as alum, saying, hey, can you help us out? Can you help a fellow alum out to make this happen? Um, and so that's my encouragement to do. check out that site uh, and and throw in ten bucks, man. We got five thousand alum in the network. All right, I, I know not everybody's gonna play, but let's just say ten percent of us play. Let's say five hundred of us participated. And if we all threw ten bucks in, man, that's five grand. That that'll make two projects happen. Right? That is 10% given 10 bucks. That's not a huge. That's not a huge. That's not a huge muscle to flex. I would love to see us flex that muscle. So please spread the word to your fellow alum to take, check that page out and support your fellow alum uh, doing this. Uh, and then uh, yeah, and this is running until February 18th. So you got some time. But give more than once. That's cool too. I'm already I, I'm already committed to giving personally to each one of the things that I submitted. I'm already in. I got some skin in the game. Come join me. Uh, let's do this together. Let's support our fellow alums that are continuing to advance nonprofits, communities, and civic participation. They're still doing the mission of public allies. Let's support them doing that in their communities. Awesome. Wow. Has a half hour already happened? Half hour's already happened. I uh, want to thank so much uh, you guys for checking us out. Remember, the public allies question is, uh, what is a gift? Again, appreciate a great time. Go on Twitter. Share out. Hashtag it. Tag a fellow alum. What is the gift or talent you're looking to share more? What you wish you could share more? Let's make PLM hashtag a thing. Oh man, Dana's gonna come back. I love it. Dana put it in the comments. Look, first time, first time viewer. She's gonna be back. She look put the little smiley emoji. Thanks for doing a little smiley emoji. That's awesome. Thanks, Dana, for doing that. Thanks for thanks for I, I love this because this gives me a chance to talk to you guys directly one on one and share what's happening. So keep coming back. Uh, and uh, next week, I'm really excited. Next week, we're gonna have on. We're actually gonna have on alumni pitching their projects. So Sabine's coming back next week. We're gonna have Jocelyn come back next week. We're gonna have some other alums. So less me, more them. And they're gonna pitch their ideas. Until then, two to our cinema club's gonna take us out. This was PA Alum Live. We'll see you next Wednesday. <laughs>